It's been a while since I uploaded the last video. I apologize if any of you waited the part 2 of the rock crystal ring. I will try to make some videos more often. In the part 1 of the rock crystal ring, I drew the perspective rendering with iPad using the drawing app Procreate. In this video, I will show you how I actually make it in real tangible jewelry. I wasn't sure how long or short I should show the process and ended up showing the whole process. There will be a long part of technical drawings, 3D modeling, rapid prototyping, revising the model, casting, making spec sheets, and the final result with the stone setting and polishing. I even changed it design once in the middle so you can skip and jump to wherever you want to see. I will put the timeline indicator of each different stage in below comment section. This is the rendering I did in the previous video. I'm going to use 3D modeling program Rhino Cheros to build this ring. In order to do that, it is better to have technical drawings that includes top view, front view, and side view of the ring. By drawing the three views, I can decide all the dimensions and small details, write curvature of each element. First, I cut off the top view drawing that I drew in previous video and put it on the new paper because there was not enough space for the other two views. In order to draw technical view of this ring, I needed the dimension of the stone and the ring size. Length 22 millimeter, width 16 millimeter. I would correct it as height instead of length. And the depth is 10 and a half millimeter. This is how I measured it with vernier calipers. We need to measure it from the table to the culet for the depths. Then I need the ring size, which will be my ring size. I tried couple ones from the ring sizer and found the right fit. Then measure the inside diameter. Now I'm ready to draw the front view and side view. I draw the gemstone first with the 16 mm width and 10 and a half mm depth. I can see only three prongs in this angle. Unlike the usual rings, this one has a stone in between fingers, so the ring hole should be on one side, not aligned to the center of the stone. The tip of the vine should be aligned from top view and the front view. Extending the line to the side view as guidelines. I draw the stone in the side view with the 22 mm height and 10 and a half mm depth. Top to bottom on the top view, which is 32 mm, should match the left to right width on the side view. 
This is how you know where the tip of the vine ends on the side view. I'm trying to draw the curve very smooth and natural. This is the model in the Rhinoceros program. I can hide the stone and the metal part look like this. Comparing to my original three views, I see the 3D model is very close. Even though this will be the look of the finished jewelry, but I'm not gonna send this model to the casting vendor. This one on the right is the manufacturing version. Prongs are extended so that jeweler can actually set the stone, bend the prongs around it, and shape them. This wire between the stone and the vine is support to keep the right distance and the shape of, uh, shape of the shank and this will be removed later. If you go to shaveways.com, this is the main page. On top right corner, hit the button saying get a quote. Then I can upload my 3D file. The model appears on the left. Then here you can see all the available material list with prices for each. My main purpose of this was very affordable rapid pro prototyping, so I would choose the cheapest option, either multi-jet fusion plastic or white plastic. Well, I tried both and I found out gray is better because white one is too bright, so it is a little hard for me to see the surface detail. Couple weeks later, my model has delivered. It was before I found out the gray option is better, so I chose white one for this time. I tried on my finger and even put the stone on the ring. Please ignore the wire between the stone and the vine. It will be removed later. Well, there was another problem. The more I see this model, I keep having the impression of this huge rock crystal is too big for me. I have tiny hands. And this stone is unusually big. So I was thinking what if I change the stone? I was debating because I already took a first video and some of you might want to see the result of the original design but also changing design direction is happening every day in real life. So I was thinking maybe it's also good to show you the changing design processes as well. Maybe it's, it's just an excuse. But anyway, I'll be the person who's gonna wearing the ring. So uh, my preference counts. <laughs> I'm so sorry for those who wanted to see the uh, result of, with the rock crystal. This is the stone I'm thinking, replacing the rock crystal. This is moonstone kebotion. I like it because it is much more casual and smaller. I compare the two different stones on my hand and see what would be better. I was thinking, why not quickly render the ring with this stone instead? I took a picture of my hand with Moonstone and then opened it in Procreate. I copied my original sketch 
and paste it in the page with the moonstone. I changed the layer mode to multiply so that I can see through the layer behind. I'm going to use the vine tail part only, then remove the rest of part. The vine tail will be the same detail anyway. Now I'm going to color the gold part. I usually use technical pen for outlining. Then I would draw four prongs. First, place prongs by putting dots, then build claw prongs shapes around them. Then I created another layer on top of it. Select the background of the below layer, invert the selected area, hit the top layer again, and add darker shade of gold with airbrushing brush. You might have noticed at this point, my favorite brushes are the technical brush under inking and soft brush under airbrushing. There must be hundreds of brushes in Procreate but I find these two are most useful, at least for me. Then I will add highlights with almost white yellow, lemon yellow. This finger shape is smudging tool and it is very effective when you want certain part blended leaving the other part crisp for, e for example on the edges of metal surface. Now I'm adding reflection with desaturated gold color. Lastly, I'm going to add darkest shade of the gold with reddish dark brown. Again, smudging around the edges.
I think the middle part look okay now. Then I'm going to add shadow that will define the depth of the each object. By pressing and hold darker part of my hand, I can pick the color of shade, shade of my skin. Then I can add shade with the airbrushing tool. Quick rendering is done, and now it is easy for me to visualize how the new stone would look in this room. So I have fixed my 3D model by taking out the prong part for the rock crystal. Instead, I built a smaller seat with four prong for the moonstone kebosha. Again, the left is presentation version and the one on the right is the manufacturing version. I explained why these two are different in earlier part of this video. I skipped the rapid prototyping process and sent the file to the casting company because I was pretty confident at this point. The casting company must have printed in castable wax first. Then by the process called lost wax casting, this model in 18 karat gold came out. This looks very matte and non-shiny because it is before the polishing. I can gently put the stone to see how the final piece might look. Now this stone and the casted metal is ready to go to the jeweler. I made a technical spec sheet to give all the information to the jeweler. It should include each view of the design, prong shapes, what kind of metal finish I want, the ring size, basically everything about the design. I'm going to drop this to the jeweler. So I'm going to show you how it turned out, the actual ring. Ta-da! I'm pretty happy with the result. And I'm sure it was a good decision to change the stone. I like how sharp those prongs are. And I also like how the vine is tapering down to the bottom shank. This pear-shaped flat surface gives more modern aesthetic to the organic look of the ring. One thing I didn't expect from this was this weird pattern showing through the moonstone. I don't know what it is, but I can guess. My first guess was the stone seat was messy before setting the stone. Or the bottom surface of the stone might be partially touching the stone, uh, touching the metal. Or my last guess is bottom surface of the stone was not even in terms of finish. Whatever it is, I learned that I should have deepened the hole for the stone seat next time and check the bottom surface more carefully going forward. You guys have seen the whole process of this ring spurs from the sketch to the actual piece. I didn't plan the video to be this way in the beginning, but now it seems more like my diary of jewelry design and making. 
I have more pieces to come. They are actually in the working process already. So if you think this video was informative or useful somehow, please like this video and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.